everyone, this is Michelle Kane with Michelle Kane Photography and Actions. And on this video tutorial, we're showcasing a photograph from Melody White Studios. Thank you to her for this use of this image. And we'll be showing you how to um, create a nice fresh color image using the Half Light Photoshop Actions. And then we'll take that color, act, uh, color edit and turn it into a cinematic black and white. So you're seeing the edit here on your screen, so we're, this is where we're going to be going. And this is where we started from. So uh, the starting point here is pretty much your basic straight out of camera, um, slightly backlit image. It has a little bit of a bluish cool color tone and we're going to run a few actions to bring out the color, the contrast, and warm it up just a little bit. So I just wanna show you how easy these half light actions are to combine to get a very quick and beautiful edit. So we're gonna be playing hide and seek, then blossom, tryst, blaze, which is a light leak, and then flora. And then of course we'll finish off with cinematic black and white. So I'm going to take these actions that have already been played and dump them to the trash. So the first one we're going to play is one called hide and seek. And this is in the base actions and it's in the make richer section. So let's just hit play on hide and seek. And it'll take just a moment here. And hide and seek plays at 70% opacity and we're just gonna leave that there. If we look inside, there are multiple layers that you can adjust. Um, everything from clarity to the contrast to the brightening. Um, the darken is also turned on by default. You can always amp that up a little bit if you need to. And in this particular case, just because I want to keep the definition in her dress, I'm going to take this darken layer and I'm going to duplicate it. And we can just drag it down to the new page, new layer icon here. So we've duplicated it. I'm going to take it all the way up to 100 and I'm going to invert Command or Control I, this layer mask here. Now with a brush, a white brush for the black mask, I'm just gonna put this brush at about 50% opacity. I'm just going to begin to brush it onto this bottom of the dress here so that we can keep all of the definition and details uh, in the dress. This is an optional step, of course. I'm gonna close down the hide and seek group here. You always wanna close down your the action that you play previous um, before you play another action on top of it. Now this uh, picture needs some warmth into the uh, tones of the skin especially, so I'm going to drop down into the color tone section and I'm going to play one called Blossom. And when Blossom plays, it's at 50% opacity. If we click that on and off, you can see the reds in the bar and in the background definitely get redder, um, but the skin tone gets a nice amp up of pinkish, warm, beautiful peach skin tone. So Blossom at 50% looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm also going to play an action in the same color tone set called Trist. And Trist is going to add in a little light airiness, but also that warmth as well. And it plays at 80% and I'm gonna go ahead and leave that pretty much where it's at. I can always adjust these later if I need to. And then we're gonna drop down into the light leak section. And in the light leaks, I will pick an action called Blaze. And Blaze is going to give us another um, layer of warmth into the picture. As you can see here, we just keep adding in and it keeps am amplifying the red in the background, the yellows, the greens as well, get a little bit punchier. And I'm seeing what's happening here is that the grass is getting a little bit yellow for my taste when I play this. So all I have to do is select the layer mask on Blaze grab a black brush and about, well, I'm gonna amp this up, probably about an 80% opacity brush, and just begin to remove some of the blaze off of the green grass. As I get close to the dress, I'll just get a smaller brush. And this is just a personal preference for me. I like my grass to be more on the green side and on the cyan side than I do the limey citrus yellow side. So. You can see here where I've masked it off. And if I shift click it, there we go. Um, you can see how masking it off made those greens come back. If you like a citrus yellow for your grass, don't mask it off. And the final step 
just to get those greens even more green, I'm going to play the action called Flora. And Flora is in the color tones as well. So Flora plays right here. And it's a very minor change. If you watch the grass as I click this on and off, you'll see the grass becomes even more of a realistic true green color. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that as default settings and then just take a little bit of it off of this really deep grass in the background where uh, I don't mind a little bit of extra citrus kind of color there. So now let's look at with just um, taking a couple of these layers off. If we go back to hide and seek, here's our original. Hide and seek gives us that nice little punch and gets us on our way with the clarity, um, the boost of light, um, the sharpness, all of that gets into the picture here. Then Blossom starts to warm it up. Trist begins to add in even a, a, a more defined layer of warmth and peachy tone to her skin. Blaze gives the picture an overall color boost. And Flora takes our grass to a nice uh, true green color. Now if you need to go and adjust any of these layers and pull any of the opacities down, you certainly can do that at this point. Um, because I have it flattened, I have all of the layers open and accessible. So starting from this point here, let's go ahead and convert this to black and white. So I've played an action in the black and white sections called cinematic. And when cinematic black and white plays, we have this nice sort of cinematic film looking black and white. Now of course, inside of cinematic black and white, there are multiple layers that we can look at. And I'm going to remove this here so we have some extra space and we can see more of the layers here. So inside of cinematic black and white a couple of the things that I'm noticing are that the dress is uh, it's starting to lose a little bit of its definition. So I will go ahead and turn on the darken layer here and when we do that we start to darken the entire picture. So I'm going to amp this up a little bit more something along those lines about 50% and then I'll invert the mask again, Command or Control I, and I will just use the white brush on the black mask and begin to just paint in that darkening just barely on her dress. So we're just bringing back some of the details on the dress and not get, letting it get too bright. Okay, once that is played, we can always go in and take down a little bit of this layer here of this painting if it's too much or increase it if it's not enough. So something along those lines. Um, of course there's a fade layer in here that you could also turn on to give it just a little bit more of that haze feel. And there's also a film grain layer built into it. So if it's too much grain you can decrease it and if it's not enough you can always um, turn it up. It's set at 35% and we um, I think I like it right here. It may not showcase uh, through the video, but there is grain going on in this picture. The other layer I want to tell you about is the highlight control layer. And this layer, if we go ahead and click it and we move it up, you can see that the picture begins to get darker. So if we need to darken up the picture a little bit, we can always do that. And then if we need to bring back some of the brightness, take your brush and begin to brush on the areas that you want to return back to bright. If you need to make the picture brighter, overall take the highlight control down. So I think I like this highlight control somewhere around uh, turned up a little bit somewhere around maybe about 55 6 percent somewhere in there and then I will remove some of this and bring back the brightness with a very low opacity about 10 percent opacity brush just on her. So we're basically darkening up the background and bringing her back to nice and bright. If I need to go ahead and bring some definition back in her cheekbones, I can also use this brightening layer, this highlight layer, to paint on her cheeks here. And by bringing some of that darkness back in, we bring some of the definition back in. All right, let's look at this before and after. There's our beautiful color edit. Here is our um, black and white edit. And as I click it on and off, I see that I want to go in here and adjust my highlight control just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and clear it out. And clicking your layers on and off definitely helps you to see what you've 
done and see if there's any mistakes or problem areas that you need to address. And I was definitely able to see that in that picture that it was just a little too bright for my taste. And um, if I hadn't clicked it on and off and compared the before and after, I never would have known. So um, going back in, I just made a couple changes to how I brushed that effect in. There's our cinematic black and white. And here's our color edit. Very quick and easy. Um, without sitting here explaining the steps to you, this edit probably would have taken a good two minutes, three minutes at the most. Um, so speeds your editing up quite a bit and gives you beautiful results. For more information about my Photoshop actions, please visit my website, michellecanephotography.com. Thanks everyone and have a blessed day.